Hey there, guys and gals and non-binary pals. Welcome back to another Well Lit Run episode on the Trains with Shane YouTube channel. Um, today, we have another one of my brother's pickups from the Plano train show. And this time, something a little bit older. This was is an A and a B unit set. The B unit's unpowered, so we're not going to cover that here. But what we've got is an Alco. Um, I'm not sure if this is a P1A or a P2A. Um, sound off in the comments if you know the difference and what this is. I'll probably end up researching it later. But either way, it's an Alco unit in Rio Grande colors. Uh, my brother picked this up for not a lot of money. Um, pretty decent looking, dusty, as used locomotives often are. I think it's a, a freight unit. I think this is supposed to be the steam generator back here. Did I say freight unit? Passenger unit. Passenger units need steam generators, not uh, not freight. Unless you'd be steaming some vegetables or something. That'd be kind of cool, but kind of weird. Anyway, very dusty. Um, one of the chimes, I think, is broke off the horn, unless it's just supposed to have one up front, which is possible. Let me get zoomed in here because it doesn't look like there's anything missing on this side. We've got our one chime pointing backwards here. I'm gonna run a, a, a soft bristle brush over this and try to de-dustify it a little bit. You can even see the dust back up in here. So, for those of you who aren't really familiar with old Concorde units like this, um, Concorde didn't make them themselves. They contracted this out to a couple of different companies and you can often tell who made what just by flipping it over and look and i taught my brother this and to his credit he made a good choice here you'll notice the trucks have the screws in the bottom that's a dead giveaway right there but if you look real close see it says made in japan right here so those of you who are able to put two and two together to make five Kato actually made these for Concor. Now, this particular unit isn't a case of what I'm about to say, but some of the older units are. Um, Kato made the mechanism and the shell, because I looked under here and it says made in Japan here on the underside where the radiator fan is. But if you have one of these units and the drive unit is made by Con, uh, Kot, words are hard, man, made by Kato, if you pop your shell off, flip it over, and it says made in Italy by RR, and that means River Rossi made the shell, and Cotto made the, the mechanical bits. Um, I've got an old Concor Southern Pacific Daylight E8, and it is one of those. Cotto manufacture the drive, and River Rossi made the shells. Very good units. The internal drive mechanisms uh, went through a couple of evolutions, and I'm not sure what this one has in it. Um, there was a version that had... It's not a, a planetary setup. I, I don't know what you would call it. There's an open round gear and a small... Almost like a ring and pinion, but... There's a small gear that's externally um, toothed with a, an open gear that's internally toothed. And the small one turns, and then as it turns, the, the big one turns, and that drives your axles. Um, I think later on they went to a standard worm gear setup. Um, either way, they're all pretty reliable, as you would expect Kato units to be. Um detail on these early units isn't fantastic but for the day they are quite good if you notice the the grill detail is nice and deep the paint is opaque there aren't any fuzzy transitions except for maybe here on the black pinstripe between the silver and the yellow um there have 
been a lot of other manufacturers from the same era. Um, I want to say that some of the AHM Yugoslavian stuff, especially on something like a Santa Fe war bonnet where the silver meets the red right behind the cab, it's real fuzzy where the transition is due to the way it was painted. Um, the Concor slash Cotto slash Riverasi ones do not suffer from that. Um, they're, they're good. You, you guys know cotto has been making good stuff since the beginning. And this is one of their better mechanisms from the early days. As you can see, we've got some magnetic trip pin knuckle couplers on here, which adds to the value. Um, looks like a little bit of scraping up front here behind the front pilot. Our wheels are a little scongy. That might affect operation. So, what do you say we get this over on the test track, find out what it does and what it does not do? I'll see you guys over there. All right, guys, once again, we have put the Ingle Nook switching layout up on top of the disgusting workbench. I'm going to turn on our power supply. Again, we are on battery power here. I'm going to go forward, dial up the juice. Ooh. Not the smoothest animal. And I think we're dealing with some pickup issues here. Huh. Now she's not picking up at all. Let's dial some electricity back in, give her a couple of taps, a couple of jiggles. Whoa. Full power there on the controller. Let's see if she'll move in reverse. Full power. Reverse she don't like. Hmm. Not very good. Let's uh let's scooch her gently back to the beginning here. Yeah, not good. She did move, but now does not. I have a feeling that it is due to our scongy wheels that you guys saw in the previous segment. So I'm going to reset. I'm going to try to find my foam cradle, and we'll see if we can do something about that. I'll bring you guys right back. All right, we're back over onto the disgusting workbench. We've got our foam cradle and our problem child here. Now to take the shell off, um, what I like to do, the, the tolerances are actually pretty tight, but if you're gentle, what you can do is you can get a fingernail in between each corner here. And you don't need to pry much more than that. Just flip it over and gravity will do the rest. Just be sure not to drop it on the floor. Okay, let's see if I can... I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Made in Japan right there. So, again, Akato made shell. The um, let me get you guys zoom back out. The uh, the the fuel tank comes off the bottom. It's got little tabs that click in. What a chunk of pig iron! Um, very heavy chassis. 
Um, I'm not sure if this is like zinc or magnesium or just billet aluminum or what, but it's heavier than I think a chunk of aluminum would be. So I'm thinking it might be zinc. Um, looks like we've got a broken diode here, which connects our headlight. Um, I don't believe that the headlight is required to make this thing run. Um, split chassis. Yeah, so we're just going to proceed like we normally would. We're going to put her upside down in our cradle here. Um, I need to turn on my electrodes. Stand by while I do that off camera so I don't upset all of our Google Home people. All right, guys, sorry about that. People get triggered if you start barking off Google and Alexa commands and stuff like that. And, and Siri and things like that. In videos, because it could cause their own devices with an earshot to, to do things. And, and, and I get it. So, anyway. Deploy the electrodes. Easy to test if, uh, if it's a motor problem or a wheel pickup problem split chassis so you just go to either side so as you guys can see not a problem with uh, the motor or the drive mechanism uh, I am going to lubricate it for sure Taking these particular shell um, chassis apart are a pain in the booty, so I'm not going to go that far. What I'm going to do, you guys have seen me do this in the past, and I will do one on camera to show you how I do it. I'm going to angle our thing a little bit. Fine grit sandpaper. You can see we've been here before. So what I do is... I roll it forward a little bit to where we get a clean surface. I will put power to the chassis. I will put sandpaper against these wheels. Um, the rear bogies aren't powered. Well, I guess the rear here, the front here. The innermost axles aren't powered. Only the outer two on each truck, so. Um, I'm going to get those cleaned up. So, let's see if I can knock the camera around a little bit more. Show you how I do this. Usually hold with one hand. Turn our power down because I don't need these things screaming. I usually steady the truck with a finger. Let me see if I can get you zoomed in and not on the back of my hand here. You don't need to put a lot of pressure here. The sandpaper is doing the work for you. light pressure and you want to move it back and forth see how I'm doing here now we'll get off of here I'll move this back out of the way get you guys zoomed in here see how much cleaner and shinier our one wheel is here then our other two that you can see there's a, a line of built up crud right there near the flange on this one, a mirror. 
So that's really going to help. Um, I am going to do the other seven power pickup and drive wheels off of camera. And I'll bring you guys back when I'm done and when we've got this thing tossed back together. Hey guys, I figured I'd show you the reassembly of this thing just because it's pretty simple. Um, without the, the fuel tank, which I've got right over here, um, this just, it slides in with no friction, no clicking, no nothing. The thing that holds it together is the fuel tank here. This particular one is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way it goes. It's a, it's a hidden component anyway. You just put it down there. There we go. And you hear it snap into place and you'll see the little teeth engage these little cutouts on either side here. And that's what holds that in. Anyway, you guys can see we were a lot cleaner here on our outer pickup and drive axles. I did drop a little Abel 107 in there and ran it for a second on the bench. So let's get this thing back onto the switching layout and find out if she does any better. Back on the Ingle Nook switching layout, we've got power on, pick a direction. Whoa. All the way to the end. Let's bring her back. Whoa. Definitely doesn't crawl very well. This particular, these particular units don't have flywheels in them. So much like the early Kato Atlas units, you guys know the ones, um, like the RS3s, the famous RS3s, the original split frames, they didn't have flywheels either. Those were freaking rocket ship race cars, but they didn't crawl very well. And of course, you guys know that newer units with flywheels and things like that, different gearings, skew wound motors, things like that, were more suited for that. But we definitely have this thing running better, still noisy as it's old, old, and... Uh, it definitely better than, than it was when it hit my bench. So I'm going to give this back to Chris, let him run and enjoy it. I'm not sure if I'm going to dig any deeper and try to put any grease on any of the internal stuff because these things are kind of precarious. You, you need three hands, and I'm not sure if I'm up to that. I'm still having horrible flashbacks of the early Hong Kong metal truck geared Bachman. What was it? It was a U-boat, um, a U-36B, I think is what they called it. My 1776, um, Spirit of 1776 unit. That thing still gives me night terrors when I think about trying to get that thing back together. So anyway, will it run? Yes, it does. Now it runs reliably. So I want to thank you guys for joining me on another Will It Run episode on Trains with Shane. And until next time, stay safe and I'll see you soon.